Dear Steve, I was the greater operator that sent in pics from Saskatchewan. Dear Steve, as I stated in my previous email, okay, what's the date on this one? May 4th. As I stated in my previous email, I had another email I had sent in in the beginning of this channel, and it was a novel. Excuse me. I hope someday it surfaces for you and others. As I stated before, I've had three encounters. The second encounter I had happened to me at my absolute favorite hunting spot. My father, brother, and I referred to it as the honey hole. This natural, untouched prairie land is as it was for hundreds of years. No cultivators, plows, and very few humans homestead at this area. I have moose, whitetail, muleys, and elk that often come into view of my trail camp. After my second experience, I went home and my wife could tell I was rattled and I was sad and angry. I never went back out that season, but after you beating into my head to not quit, I got back out bow hunting the next season. Perfect, good for you, man. You're a brave man. This experience I had the next year was not a scary experience at all. It was weird, but not scary. And this story might have something to do with what might be going on in places, but I can't say for sure. When I watched your video a couple days ago, you were filming the buffalo herd. A light bulb went, a light bulb moment went off for me. I apologize, this may sound a little strange, as I can't wrap my mind around it. This has nothing to do with the Sabe this time, but it might be a reason they were there the season before. Here it goes. After walking out of my blind one evening after a full day sit bow hunting, I walked to the top of the hill between me and my truck. It was dead calm, you could hear everything. It was unusually quiet but in a peaceful way. I stood on the hill enjoying the last minutes of light and taking in the beauty when out of nowhere I heard the most unusual sounds. It was early October and the moose were in the rut hard. I'd been chased out of my spot a few times rutting moose. Yes, moose all over the place. Carrying on. As I stood on the hill I could hear these weird grunts all around me like everywhere. I stood for roughly 15 minutes rubbing my eyes, spinning in circles, thinking to myself, if these were bull moose, where the hell are they? If they were frogs, they had to be 30 pounders to make that croak. I was a little uneasy at first because of my experience the season before, but I just stood and took it in. I listened for a long while and couldn't figure it out. I just walked back to my truck, went home. There was nothing more to it than that. What grabbed my attention from your video of the bison a couple days ago was the noise they made. That's exactly 100% what I was hearing. Sounds crazy, right? My question is, was it possible I walked into a different time or place briefly and could have possibly been surrounded by a bison for 200 years ago? Furthermore, could my experience I had from the season before mean that the area I bow hunt in might have some kind of vortex or strange energy to it? Your question is as good as mine, but I thought I should share it anyway. It was one of the strangest experiences I've ever had. Not scary, but strange. There it is. Do what you want with it, people. Take care and God bless. Joshua. P.S. I'll send a pic of the monster deer I've been after the last four years. I've only seen him five times. Out of day's setting, I've dubbed him the ghost. I'll share my pic to get my fellow brothers and sisters back out in the field. LOL. I'll send a pic of the monster deer I've been after for the last four years. I've only seen him five... Oh, you wrote that twice. Weird. That's a chunk of deer, and knowing that it's a Saskatchewan, for anybody who's not familiar, because a lot of my friends in the south have hunted with like 150 pound deer is a big one. This, I'll bet, is probably 250 pound plus deer. So that'll give you an idea how big that sucker is, that Canadian whitetail. And that is what we call a cranker. <laughs> You've seen him five times. Just so you know, side note on the deer hunting thing, you know, a lot of these bucks behind me, especially the top, these monsters, the monster blacktails I got behind me, when I'm hunting them, I've known of one buck. I knew of one buck, one of the ones behind me. I knew of him for about three years. I never seen him once. And then the only time I see them is when I get them. And even then, you only see them for 30 seconds, then it's over, right? And then another one I've chased after for six years, seen him twice. <laughs> That's it, twice my own eyes. But I had probably over 60 trail cam photos of them. But anyway, back to your question. <clears throat> Is that what's going on? There's a strong possibility, for sure. Because uh, 
all the evidence that the people are bringing in points to something like that going on for sure in numerous places. There's some, some really weird shit going on. And as far as being out in the prairie as well, um, I had somebody else, nuclear, nuclear energy professional, who said, quote, that they were in a remote place in the prairies where there is U.S. military nuclear missile site, very remote, zero timber, zero cover, and this thing was standing there looking up in the, into the uh, security cameras at them within the, the security perimeter. There you go. And no cover and no forest for miles. Where'd he come from? Right? I'm sure somebody might know something or have a similar experience and they're going to comment about it maybe in the comment section below. I don't know. Good luck getting that buck, man. You'll get him. If you quit, you won't get him. All right? Never quit. I don't give a shit what you're doing, what the topic is. Don't quit anything. Ever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, keep going. Oregon is not Borgen. <laughs> Yo, my dude Steve, and other awesome peeps listening to these experiences being shared. During the summertime of the 90s to early 2000s, my family, consisting of multiple non blood members, would camp at White Creek Campground and others in that area in Glide, Oregon. Many strange occurrences, multiple spiritual, paranormal experiences. The ones that stuck through were being charged by. The ones that stuck, though, were being charged by angry spirits. The one mainly that plays through my mind the most is when I went up the trail across from our camp. It goes up about a mile before there's a drop-off. Anywho, I went up by myself. I was having a hard time that day. I was around 12 or 13 at the time, just walking, enjoying the smells and beautiful but eerie views the forest has to offer. I got towards the end as I smelt an unusual but familiar smell and a noise I hear almost every night while I'm trying to sleep at camp. The smell is like a skunky, sulfur, putrid, dead animal smell. Definitely not pleasant by any means. I hear this grunting, and I look down at the creek below, down a steep embankment around 100 feet away. This huge, reddish-brown and black hair covered by bipedal being hunched over, splashing around in the water with their hands. I'm assuming trying to catch crawdads or small fish. I was taken aback, knowing exactly what I was staring at. So I backed up a little bit, trying not to piss myself from not fear, but shock mostly. And all of a sudden, in a step, I snapped a twig underneath my foot while backing up. This creature stands up quickly and turns from the waist up. And that face is so human-like, but more caveman looking, if that makes sense. Those eyes looking straight into my soul. I can feel the, oh shit, I wasn't paying attention from them. In my mind, I'm wanting to scream, but I can't make a sound. I heard a voice inside saying, run. They look beside them, and in a split second, they just bolt the other way, my head turning to watch them. I see them step behind a huge tree, and they know where to be seen. I thought there was just one. I don't know the gender, but it was at least seven, eight feet tall, abnormally long arms, built like an effing pro wrestler, non-steroidal, LOL. Had to be at least 500 plus pounds. All through my childhood, at that campground area, I always felt being watched, and not from the usual parental watching. I know they're around with rocks hitting the tents at night. Hands running across the tent, the smell, Needless to say, I don't like camping anymore. I'll go into the woods with people for a day, but I won't stay past dark. The being slash creature didn't scare me. It was more shock. Of course, the adults laughed at me when I said that what I just experienced. I've seen them on numerous occasions in the hills, driving down the highway, peeking around trees. My name is Tom Sweely. I live in Eugene, Oregon, and I don't give two pimples off a donkey's ball sack if anyone believe me or if my name gets shared. I know what I've experienced, and I'm not scared to admit it. Thanks for letting us awesome, knowledgeable people have a safe place. Take care. There you go. Another member of the club 
It's funny, you took me to my grandfather's story when I read that. And I said that before in the past. Uh, they really screw up alongside creeks, right? Why is that? Why is that? I don't know why it is, but I'll tell you what. I, my senses are on fire when I'm hiking up a river in the cover. My senses aren't that much on fire when I'm in a wide open riverbed, which is typical up north. But when I'm, when I'm in a small, a smaller creek bed, like the one that I still had fish in that small with thick timber on either sides, those are the ones that I'm more wary of when I'm slipping along in the timber along the river, because I know that the chances of bumping into one of these things by accident, the probabilities are, are way higher for some unknown reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. Is it the water that shorts out their senses? Maybe. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe one day they'll tell us. All right, here we go. What do we got here? I'm just gonna keep on going, because I can, because I can't leave for a few hours and I don't have much else I really wanna do before I leave. I'm gonna be gone for five or six days. Another First Nations puzzle piece for you. Love it. Hi Steve, JD here. I wrote to you about the Calling Back Your Spirit ceremony. Frog Clan, Dekel. I want to fill in a few holes that kind of left open in the last letter. So in this letter, I'm going to talk about more Sesestilol stuff. The little people, witchcraft, cannibal giants, among other things. But first, the topic of PTSD again. I don't want to lead anyone astray, so I'm going to have to be a bit less cryptic and a little more forthcoming about some details of things. Every time I sit to write, it is difficult to articulate myself and say what I fully want to share accurately. So here it goes. Firstly, do I think folks with PTSD from their experiences need to do a calling back? All right, no, read it. Read it. Read it. I hope I haven't read this one. Here we go. What's this? Bigfoot encounters slash stories, interdimensional encounters. Hi, Steve. Thank you for providing a place for us to share. We have seen while out in the woods. Our stories are all different and unique. And they all have one thing in common, that is the fact that Bigfoot does exist. I lived in Northern California, Humboldt County, from 96 to 2005. I like to go out exploring and driving through the redwoods to find nice remote places to park and go for hikes. I saw an old bridge and decided to pull over and check it out. I drove over the bridge, which had a nice little river running under it. I parked my truck, got out, walked over the old wooden bridge to check out the old construction on it. I looked down on the water to see if I could see any salmon. I walked down around a guardrail and started heading down the hill to get under the bridge to check it out when I noticed it was totally overgrown. Recent storms must have raised the water and washed a bunch of brush and broken tree branches, which fully blocked my access to go under the bridge. So I decided to do so I decided what to do and which way to go next. I sat there for a minute on the steep slippery slope about ten feet from the bridge and just a couple feet from the water. I was just looking around for fish when all of a sudden from under the bridge, just on the other side of all those branches blocking my view of the underside of the bridge, I heard the loudest, deepest, most powerful grunts I've ever heard in my life. Nine grunts exactly. I instantly froze, actually couldn't move for a few seconds. I knew right then and there I had to leave because the grunts were obviously directed at me. I felt it looking at me. I knew it was not pleased in my presence to say the least. I somehow regained my composure after being froze up for who knows how long. I was finally able to turn around and quietly but quickly run back up the steep hill because there was no doubt whatsoever that he wanted me out. I remember walking to my truck once I got up the hill, taking big steps but not running. I was trying to play it off. By the time I got to the truck, the intense fear set in again, and I actually got in and locked the effing doors as soon as I got in my truck. I started it up, threw it in gear, 
and did a big donut and headed back over the bridge to get back on the road. I was kind of thinking it might come out and block me from crossing the bridge, but it didn't, thank God. Needless to say, I got the hell out of there ASAP. The grunting was so powerful and so loud and intense that I knew nothing in the world other than a Sasquatch was capable of making that loud of a sound. The grunts were so powerful that his lungs had to be massive, indicating his chest and his face had to be enormous to project with that much intensity. I'll never forget. It happened so fast after I walked down to the water, I almost thought it was a dream or that it couldn't be real for a moment until it went quiet. Reality set in and I realized it was on the other side of the bushes under the bridge just a few feet away. I'll admit it scared the hell out of me. It wasn't about, I wasn't about to stay there another second. There's a hiking trail which goes into Headwaters Forest. I've been in that area a few times on the other day hikes, but this time I decided to go off the trail and venture deep into the old growth forest. I was looking for a nice place to maybe grow a little something for myself. Anyways, I crossed a stream at the hardest point to cross to make sure I was way off in an area that was hard to access for my garden. I noticed that on the other side of the stream was a cliff with some vines hanging that I used to scale up the cliff. I ventured way up the hill into the trees until I found a plateau. There's a rock outcrop, so I went to it and sat quietly for a while, ate some snacks I had brought along. That's when I heard the crystal clear whistles. Again, I heard the first set of whistles as I headed off the trail just a few minutes before I got to the stream. When I heard the first whistle, it struck me as strange because it sounded so human-like. Single whistle, right off path. I'd stopped to search for the bird that may have made the sound. I remember thinking, I've never heard a bird do a whistle like that and so clear. It sounded big. I thought I might be able to see it. If I looked in the trees, I saw nothing. So I kept going. When I heard another whistle on the other side of the path in the bushes, I actually started thinking I may have wandered into an area where someone may have been growing cannabis and they were, there were lookouts in a treehouse or something because it was as if they were communicating. Anyways, I heard the whistling again right away where I sat eating. I was sitting there quietly when all of a sudden a tree 50 yards away started shaking violently for no more than a quick second. Hundreds of leaves fell off the tree and fell to the ground. I saw it as I, I saw it as I turned my attention to it. It scared the shit out of me because I saw the tree moving back and forth and I knew that was not normal at all. And something, something big shook it. I was drawn to the dark area of the tree that had a lot of shade and overgrowth midway up. I kept staring at what looked like a big, dark, hairy gorilla looking creature in the tree staring right at me. She had a fat belly like she was deep in a pregnancy. We looked at each other for a long time. I was absolutely convinced I was seeing something that was there that had changed its position or ever so slightly over a long time, but it also seemed to be cloaking itself, getting blurry, disappearing halfway. I could see her face and eyes, but I was actually seeing through her somehow. I remember seeing branches and leaves behind her, right through her belly, like she was halfway disappearing into thin air. I was stunned by what I was witnessing. I knew for sure it wasn't a grower's lookout at this point. I wasn't sure what to do, so I just stared at the creature in the tree, but I did it out of my peripheral vision so I wouldn't know for, so it wouldn't know for sure I was looking at it, even though it shook the tree on purpose to get my attention. No doubt in my mind. As I sat there, I heard another whistle coming from up the hill, but, I had, but it had bad intentions. I started feeling extremely nervous, and I felt like the faraway whistle was getting much closer each time I heard it. I kept thinking it was a big male that was not docile, like the disappearing female that got my attention. I felt the tension building, and I knew it was getting much closer and closer by the sounds of the whistle. I felt this horrible, threatening sensation looming over me. I couldn't take the suspense shit anymore, so I grabbed my pack and got the hell out of there. That happened 30, 40 minutes, 
30 to 40 minutes before the bridge encounter. I hiked back to my truck and that's when I drove to the bridge where the grunting episode happened. I drove about 8 to 10 miles to the bridge, believe it or not, for some strange reason. I think it was the same big male that was under the bridge that may have been whistling earlier by the pregnant one on the tree. I know that it seems impossible, but I suspect it was him, and he had to have ran down the river 8 to 10 miles to be at the bridge before I got there in my truck, and I was doing 40 to 50 miles per hour. Either that, or we teleported, or did the supernatural magic trick, whatever it's called. I know it sounds strange, but that's what was going on through my mind. There were other times while out in the woods near Willow Creek. I was camping with a few friends when, just after it got dark, we heard long screaming noises coming from way up the canyons and farther up the other ridges. There were other screams and they seemed to be communicating. Many were screaming the same long, loud, blood-curdling, woman-type screams, one at a time, one after the other. We know there weren't any people up there. It was very steep, thick forest, and nobody on earth can scream like that. Nobody. The main story I want to share with you is the time a girl and I were parked up on a hill overlooking the valley in Bridgeville. We were sitting in my car, and we were just talking about the turnaround and go back to our campsite at Grizzly Creek down the mountain. I shut off my car, I shut my car off, and we were just listening to some music. Well, I was looking in my rear view mirror when I saw a Bigfoot emerge from an old oak tree. It was about 30 feet behind my car. What I saw was, I noticed movement in my rear view mirror. I noticed a strange blur slash mirage from the main trunk of the tree. Its body shaped form formed. Its body shape formed from within the tree. It literally manifested from the tree. It was a Bigfoot. He came out of the tree literally in a motion that looked as if he were floating, and I did not see his legs move. He came toward my car, put his hands in my trunk, and looked in my back window right at us. In my rearview mirror, I saw the whole thing. He was actually looking at her hair, mainly. She had long blonde dreadlocks. He stood there for only, he stood only for about 10 seconds or less as I was tapping her leg, telling her not, not to turn around but to look in the mirror. I turned the music down completely, shut it off, flipped her visor down so she could look in the mirror so she could see behind her without turning around. She didn't know what I meant. At this point, he immediately backed up still facing forward with no leg movement. He floated all the way back to the tree in reverse and then he lifted his arms up in the tree, the same shape and placement of the branches and then he blended, should I say manifested, back into the tree. He disappeared into the bark slash trunk with the same blur, heat-like mirage thing as he did when he first appeared. I know it sounds crazy, as bat shit, but I'm telling you I saw what I saw. But unfortunately, she did not see it at all. I've told several friends in my family about this and the, the grunting story, but I can honestly say I don't think they took me serious. I have no reason to lie about anything. Thanks for listening and sharing this. Please let me know if anyone else has had any interdimensional encounters. P.S. I gave a hitchhiker, a Native American guy, a ride one day and he shared with me his grandma's knowledge of sharing the land with a Sasquatch. She said the elders left them alone and told stories of them being interdimensional beings and having strange superpowers Well, they've been known to be able to turn into their other types of animals. I told him my story after he mentioned that. I've never heard of that until he told me what his grandma told him. I knew what I saw and experienced. That pretty much proved to me that at least I wasn't the only one to have had those kind of encounters with the elusive one. Thanks again, Steve, for doing what you do. Much appreciated. Grose, you can use my name. That's another shit eater, right? Shit eating meaning, shit eater meaning, it's just a shit eating thing to have to have experience something like that and share it. 
when it sounds absolutely ridiculous to most people today, right? But it's that so many people. I mean, people from British Columbia email me in. People who I know who they are saying they watch this thing disappear behind a six inch tree. Disappear. We had the native guy, friend of ours, the man who had, who's a logger, who had one jump on his broken down equipment in the middle of the night near Spencer's Bridge. We had him email us again of um, the other logger who was near, oh man, I can't remember that, North Prince George Mackenzie. They're, these guys are Mackenzie telling the story, and the logger said, that he cut the huge cedar down and inside was a huge skeleton. And then of course, the conservation officers are called, this is between McBride and Clearwater in those mountains. So that is four hours north of Kamloops, roughly on the left, back in there. And then they came and shut it down, closed the gate, got the logging, shut the logging down, end of story. How do you get a huge skeleton inside of a huge tree? All right, don't ask me for the answers for this shit because I don't know. But we're going to talk out loud about it. I don't give a shit how crazy it sounds. We're talking loud about it here. Right? And the more we hear, the more we realize the original so-called big names in the Bigfoot Sasquatch community have kept all this shit away from the, the audience that they managed to carry until this point of the game. And only now are we getting all the real truths out, right? Take from it what you will or leave it. All right, what do we got here? This is titled, They're Not Just in the Forest, but in Your Backyard. There's a comforting statement. Hi, Steve. Love the channel and the wisdom you share along giving people a voice. I have a YouTube channel called Murp Murp. I'm by no means a so-called researcher, but I have interest in the subject. I often go hiking in places where reports have happened and film locations. Many of the videos I create show the places where the reports happen. Places like Ape Canyon near Mount St. Helens. I felt uneasy in the woods hiking out at times. Heard trees fall suddenly, but I've never had an encounter. But this isn't about those hikes. This is about my own backyard. I live 20 miles outside of Olympia, Washington, on five acres of land butted up to DNR. Department of Natural Resources land. That is where I have had the strangest things happen. If you walk up the trail from my house, there is miles and miles of forest along with power lines as far as you can see. On the other side of the power lines, there are trees everywhere. You get the idea. As for instance, I've seen footprints. I have pictures. There are tree structures all over with broken trees thrown up in another tree like a javelin. Let's say it one more time. There are tree structures all over with broken trees thrown up in another tree like a javelin. Here are some of the things I've experienced out there. When hiking, I was coming to a T in the trail and looking forward. I saw what I can, what I call the predator movie thing. I literally saw something running in front of me through the trees from right to left that looked like a pixelated being that was about seven feet tall. There was no noise. I was with my girlfriend at the time but didn't want to spook her so I kept it to myself. Another time hiking, I heard grunting. I could not see through the thick forest. However, there was a 25 foot tree that was swaying back and forth about three feet to each side. Whatever it was, it was shaking. The tree was massive. We have bears out here, but they are small. I've seen only one in the years hiking out there. If it could not have made that, it could not have made that sway like that. I got the hell out of there. One night I was driving down the dirt road from the house to the main road, coming around a corner. Yellow eyes appeared at the seven foot level on the driver's side of the road. As I got closer, the eyes backed up into the forest. I didn't want to look and kept driving. I know people will say it was an owl or a raccoon. Well, there's no tree there. It's open space. I know what I saw. These are just three incidents that I've had. Don't get me going about the noises I hear at night or the motion lights around the property turning on suddenly at 2 a.m. I appreciate the time you dedicate to reading people's experiences. Stay safe, James. Okay, man, thanks for that. And, uh, you know, I've very seen the past. I don't promote anybody's channel ever. I don't know who's emailing me or what the motive is. So if I come across any kind of a name of a channel or something, I, I skip it. All right, you guys? All right, so... Uh, one big thing you take from there is 
20 miles outside of Olympia, Washington. There you go, you guys, all right? 20 miles outside of Olympia, Washington. Another one. And another, and another, and another, and another. All right, one more. Rare encounters in Wyoming. More than Sasquatch and my puzzle pieces. Hello, Steve. I'm enjoying your video format for about a year now. Excuse me. Then I started to put some pieces together about my life. I'm actually terrified. Forgive me if this is longer. I'll try to keep it short. Generations of my family have had encounters that they wrote off. Great Uncle Harry saw a two-foot hairy man with a human face. My father had a small hunting cabin. One night there was screaming like a woman being murdered brutally. Rocks and logs were thrown at his small cabin. My other uncle described a night he thought a demon would take him because a small hairy man with wings kept slamming the window, screaming. That's weird. Also, I cannot find documentation, but it's been told over the years an ancestor was killed by having his face smashed into the back by having his face smashed into the back of his skull, liver and intestines removed. They say it was a bear. Ouch. We've also had UFO encounters. Once my dad was once my dad was with friends or cousins, I can't recall at the moment. And all but my dad jumped out waving to greet them. My dad hid in the vehicle. All of this is in PA. He had other encounters that I think was involving a portal. Now, before I ever knew what a great alien looked like, I would draw it and was terrified of them. My sister would say she saw lights in the bedroom windows, became paralyzed, and watched me float out. Now, my five-year-old granddaughter is doing the same thing, but she calls them potatoes and tells them no. Now, to Sasquatch and the connection I'm getting at, Looking back, not knowing the patterns, I believe I've encountered them at least four times. Once at a young age, maybe nine in the Big Horn Mountains in Wyoming. Dad and I were camping, and all of a sudden we both felt just wrong. He asked if I wanted to leave, and I said, please. We threw everything in the truck and drove home at 9 p.m. I asked him later why he drove three hours to go home, and he said... I put my hand in my 44 and I heard in my head, you can't protect or leave now. Second time, I was hiking with my girls at an old abandoned mine that, was, that has cave systems and crumbling buildings. After passing the midway point, rocks were thrown at us and in my head I heard the name being called. I heard my name being called. Something else too, but I'll keep it to myself. I beelined my girls to the car while we heard and saw black shadows in the sagebrush. I thought it was ghosts. Here in Wyoming, the sage gets 10 feet tall or more. Once I walked up on two huge bull moose and didn't even know they were there. The brush was so tall. Thank God they let me back out with my head down. Thirdly, we were watching a meteor shower about 3 a.m., 14 miles outside of town. I felt dread all of a sudden. We all heard a wail. What the F? My husband is stubborn. I was practically crying for him to get in the car. Finally, pulling onto the road just outside the headlights, I saw a 10-foot tall figure, long arms and hairy, standing there. It smelled like a dead antelope. What threw me off was it appeared to have antlers. Now I'm thinking he was carrying a dead deer or an elk over his shoulder. Finally camping nearby, my husband and I parked outside the campground. That night, something big circled our SUV we slept in. I woke up with that feeling of dread. We had the hatchback open towards the river for fresh air, so anything could enter that vehicle. I was so afraid I could not look. I could feel the eyes from above and bending down to look in. I can't explain it, but I got feeling. For hours it circled. I think I passed out. Here's the kicker. That summer I could not go in my backyard. I loved it back there, but it just felt wrong. We'd find dead rabbits, skunks, cats, birds, feathers scattered everywhere. Also, there was a huge tree limb broken off from the base of the trunk for no reason. It was healthy, no lightning signs. I slept my window open summer or winter. I'm crazy, lol. I kept smelling a skunk all the time. We also heard great horned owls or coyotes almost every night. Not too unusual, but not that often. 
Also, dead birds on our front porch. We put up security cameras, landscape lights, and solar lights in the trees. We, had ton we have a ton of trees. I've seen dog men outside my home and my children's home. The cemetery is my backyard. My husband saw it once. I kid you not. I woke up one night and it was standing over me in my bedroom. I thought I was dead. It took me 15 minutes for the pain in my heart to stop, even though it was gone after I closed my eyes and opened them again. My girls and granddaughter have seen things in their homes too. Here's my non-factual but gut feeling puzzle. My family has either a gift or a curse. I've seen and talked with spirits and so have my girls and my grandkids. I struggle with it biblically. I recall alien abductions involving reproductive experiments. I've tried to study native and first nation cultures, Irish, English, Greek, Egyptian, Russian, African, and a few others about their folklore. I find a lot of commonality among them all, from hairy wild men that lead men to their deaths in the swamps, women stolen for mates, little green men with big eyes or fae, not men in green suits like on St. Patrick's Day, fairy winds, sirens, or kelpies, flying objects, orbs, spirits, lizard people, and the Lemurians. A lot of conspiracy theories in there, I know. What if we are the zoo? What if there are many species living among us and they use us for what their race's uses are? I think there is a genetic manipulation. New species made with our DNA or reproductive material. I think the government is completely part of it. Maybe trying to create the ultimate soldier. Maybe perfecting portal, portal usage, usage for warfare. The missing 401 people seem to be picked in a way. Maybe brain transfer, maybe children used to create these new species. I know I'm not a scientist or well-spoken, but I've given a lot of thought to this after reading many books on the subjects. My final thought is they, and I can expand on that if needed, have taken away our ability to use our brains in the way we're supposed to. That I will agree with 110%. For we are too big of a threat. The little bit that I can do, speaking with the deceased, reading people's minds, not everyone, seeing three steps ahead of a potential opponent. These are all things they don't want us to be able to do. Control is the name of the game. Collectively, we need to wake up and win this war. Maybe Sasquatch or some will assist us. Maybe there are unseen species out there that have our backs that are not Sasquatch. The only way we can crack this code is together with open minds. Let's keep trying. Thanks, Steve. Lauren. P.S. You're a stand-up guy. I have no doubt you vet your sources. I do worry at times that some emails may lead people to find a Sasquatch clan and try to make friends. How do we not know things told to some people are not lies? I don't know, Steve. I'm not trying to question your integrity. I trust your instinct. I'm just curious, cautious, because I have fallen victim to evil people out there that led me into demonic situations that took all I had to overcome. LOL. Of course, I know mediumship is so hard to believe as Sasquatch, UFOs, and Dogman, but I still deal with the ramifications from that demonic encounter. It's just the mom in me. I worry about people. Thank you, Steve. Okay, that was a mouthful. Lauren, that was a mouthful. You covered a whole pile of topics, and mo most of them, most people go, yeah, right, right? But if you are communicating with people other than humans, then you should have some answers, some definitive, direct answers to a lot of the questions you have, or many other people have, too, right? If you do have some direct answers, you should share them with us. The rabbit holes... Right? The rabbit holes get numerous and the rabbit holes get bigger, no matter what you do with it, no matter which way you go. Mm -mm -mm. And how do you know? I think you ask, how do you know? If people are telling the lie or, or not, uh, you go with your gut instinct. That's what I do. I go with my guts. I go with my gut instinct every single time. Yes, I read emails before ever reading them ever before all the time. And, and, and that is because... I am not the one who decides what you will hear or read. I'm not, and no one else is. But you are the only one who will decide 
if you will take from something from it or leave it. You know, we all know, I am, I'm 100% convinced we know the answers to most everything already. We just have to get more in tune with what's up here and what's in here. That's the key. We have to get in tune, right? Perhaps sharing these emails is what helps kickstart everyone into giving their head a shake, waking up out of that fog, the fog that's been intentionally drilled into us, open up your brain and work it and use it. Use your intuition. Use your gut instincts, right? That's what we need to do. You're not going to get ahead in life unless you do. You're not going to be free unless you do. Anyway, there we go. This is possibly one of the longest times I've ever sat down in one spot and shared emails. <laughs> I'm actually curious to see exactly how many we've thumped out. And this is probably going to go in two videos. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 emails shared. That's a record. Let's make it 16. Here we go. Fittingly, luckily this one's short enough because I can see the battery's almost dead in that damn camera. Dog man encounter in Wisconsin. Please don't use my name. I won't, and please don't have it typed out in the story. <laughs> My story happened back in 83 when I was only 10 years old. I lived in a very small Wisconsin town of maybe 30 people. I was visiting a friend. This is during the summer, so me and my brothers would stay out until the early morning hours. Anyway, I decided to go home instead of spending the night. I had my bike with me, and I got 100 yards down the road when I heard this blood-curdling howl. It made the hairs on my arms stand up, and my body started to shake. I felt something watching me, and it definitely felt evil. I started to pedal as fast as I could, almost wrecking my bike once I rounded a corner. I finally got to the same town, and there was a few street lights which illuminated the road. But I still felt this overwhelming fear. I was exhausted, and my legs were like bricks. I got to the hill leading up to my home. Waiting up at the top of the hill was our German Shepherd. Her hairs were standing up as she was growling. It seemed like she was in guard mode. She stayed behind me until I got in the house. She came in with me and stayed up with me until I eventually fell asleep. For many years, I moved back to this... From after many years, I moved back to this area and I've never heard that howl again. But I'm convinced what I heard and felt was a dog man and that my dog protected me that night. Love your channel. Keep speaking, speaking for us because the skeptics need to wake up. Skeptics need to wake up. Well, I don't know. Well, how are we going to benefit from the skeptics jumping on board? Or anybody for that matter. You know what I mean? It's like, people are going to accept it or not. I guarantee you, like, this is say my neighbor over here laughed at all these topics. I'm not going to benefit in any way by putting out the effort to convince my neighbor. And then what's going to change if my neighbor gets convinced, right? But anyway. That's it for me today. I'm talked out. I'm talked out. Time for me to get going. So much to say. So many different things I want to talk about. So many messages I want to convey to the people. I will later when I have more time, for sure. Be safe out there. If you can make it across the border, if you're Canadian and you want to go fishing, it's book it at howtohunt.com. And if you have something you want to get off your chest, somebody you want to expose for being evil and dark, misleading, or some knowledge you want to share, share my story at howtohunt.com. Get it out.